Three, two, one, go. Okay. I thought I had it. Yeah, yeah same here. And I was just like, wait. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I'm just guessing at this point. <laughs> yep, that's us. You might be wondering how we got here, and to explain that, we need to take you back to earlier this day. All right, guys, so we are on our way to go and take the LSAT. We actually haven't looked this up at all. We haven't done any research on the exam, so we're going in completely blind. As return viewers to the channel will know, we are qualified lawyers in Hong Kong, but we've never practiced in the States, and because we didn't go to law school there, we never actually took the LSAT. And given that the LSAT is an exam meant for law school in the States, we always wondered how we would do as qualified lawyers in a different jurisdiction. So today, we're actually gonna take the exam and we're gonna have our results looked at by a professional tutor from Premier LSAT Prep, who also happened to be sponsoring today's video. Premier LSAT Prep is an LSAT tutoring company that offers personalized tutoring for as low as 60 US dollars an hour. They've gotten a number of their students into top law schools like Harvard and Columbia, and today in this video, you're gonna actually get to see what it looks like to do a personalized tutoring session with them as we receive feedback on our practice test. Special thanks to Premier LSAT Prep for sponsoring today's video. How do you think we're gonna do? I don't even know how long this exam is. Actually, how long is it, like three hours? Two and a half? Two and a half. Only one way to find out. We'll see. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> Ready to go? And just like that, we're right back to where we left off. Let's keep going, shall we? Oh, shit. Did you finish? I, I didn't get to the last one. God, that was awful. The the stress of the time was just Yeah, not... yeah. In the beginning, it was like, ah, la di da 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 Oh, did you get the score right away? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I got 20 out of 27. Oh my god, I only got 12. You got 12? <laughs> so bad. Wait. What? 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 12? <laughs> How'd you get 12? Wait. The thing is, I didn't you pace speed, myself. Speed, I didn't I didn't pace myself. So 15 yeah, yeah, yeah. through 27, I only got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Correct. 15 to 27. Yeah. Wow. Okay, it must yeah. have been a time issue then. Yeah, yeah, I think it was yeah. a time issue. <laughs> wow. That was... What? 12? <laughs> So bad. That's pretty bad. I think I didn't take the LSAT. <laughs> <laughs> section two, less questions. So that's good. Let's go. That's right. We'd only gotten through one section out of four on the exam by this point, And we knew so little about the exam that we didn't even know what the sections were called or what they were testing. Well, we know now. Section one is reading comprehension. Pretty straightforward. Sections two and three for us were logical reasoning. Not quite as straightforward. Question eight. Huh? I'm on eight. Yeah, I'm also on eight. <laughs> I thought I, I thought I had it, but I yeah, same here. And I was just like, wait. Yeah. Logical reasoning had us read short prompts, then answer questions like which answer best completes the argument. Basically, testing our logic. Just like in reading comprehension, we got our results back right away. Oh, I did really bad on this one. I, I ran out of time. So I did 16 out of 25. 13 out of 25. <laughs> God damn. Did you get eight right? Uh, nope. Did you? Yeah, I got it right. Oh, dude, I, yeah, I got that one wrong. All right, section three. Section three was the same as section two, so it was easy enough for us to figure it out. But little did we know, the worst was yet to come. Oh, 19. Oh, 13. <laughs> oh my god, you're not doing so hot. <laughs> oh man. Okay, last one. 23 questions only. You ready to go? Yeah. Let's just blast through it. And finally, we made it to the fourth and final section, known as analytical reasoning or logic games. Logic games are a bit harder to explain, but as you'll see later in the video, it's basically a mixed bag of questions requiring you to apply logic to a system of rules and conditions. And since we didn't look up anything beforehand, we ran into a little bit of confusion halfway through. Can I have a piece of paper? Hmm? Are we allowed to have paper with this? Uh, uh, never mind, let's just do it without paper. You want paper? I don't know if we're allowed to. I'd rather just like, not just avoid it. Oh. But just get it to the point where it's like, paper will be very helpful. <laughs> and with spirits and energy at an all time low, we raced our way to the finish line and managed to finally close out the exam. That was pretty brutal. It's so hard without paper. Are we allowed to have paper? Like, I don't know if we're allowed I think to have paper. I feel like, I feel like you must be able to scribble. Yeah, I when so. Lie, when I got to the la this last question, I was just like, I know. I honestly like. I kind of. I kind of ran out of steam too. I was like, ah, whatever. Like, I'll just guess. Sixteen out of twenty-three. Okay. <laughs> I got seven. Seven out of twenty-three. No, I'm not even. I. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> disclaimer. Disclaimer. I like. I saw the types of questions and I was like. I, I can't be bothered. Okay, I'm not so going to lie. I was I, just like, I can't be bothered. I actually enjoyed the fourth one the most. 
although it was very painful not having paper. So I had yeah. to use the highlighter section, the, the highlighter tool they have in here. And you can tell I got fatigued at the end because in the last four, I got three of them wrong. Yeah, no, uh, disclaimer, I was like, became entirely mo some gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could tell. You looked pretty, you looked pretty I mean. was just like... What was your what was your score? I got a one fifty eight. Uh, it tells you at the end. So oh, one forty three. One forty. That's still that's still all right, I think. Wait, sorry. What is it out of? I think it's out of one eighty. Oh. I don't know. Like I okay. I feel like we the, ran into it's stamina. It was like stamina, stamina and also like time the management. <laughs> Dude, we were chilling on the first one, right? I was just like la di da. Yeah, we were hanging out, and then like I mean, I think it's indicative because like when you look at my section two, yeah, I bombed like the last like six or seven, right? Yeah. Just completely, just had to like randomly guess. I'm curious. Do you think this is actually like relevant and helpful if you want to be a lawyer? Because I I'm kind of mixed on this, but I'll, I want to hear your thoughts. You know, I thought four. I was like. This is totally useless in real life. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. And it's not even because I didn't like it. Yeah. But I was like, oh, you don't ever have to figure anything out like that. Yes. But I thought, one, also, honestly, the type of reading comprehension is the type you see a lot in school. But, mm. like, how you process stuff in real life is going to be really different. But I can see why it's still relevant. I thought two and three are probably most similar to the kinds of logic you would have to, like, employ in real life. Yeah, I agree. I think it's all about the nuance and sort of like what's being said. I think they're, you know, they ask the questions in a very specific way. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's obviously some level of like, you know, you need to prepare for that and do enough yeah. practice to know what they're asking for and kind yeah. of game it like that. Yeah. But in terms of like, you know, lawyer brain firing, I think that was probably two and three. I agree with you. Like we're probably the most relevant. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to lie. I just absolutely, I literally just gave up in the last <laughs> section. I was like, <laughs> this is not the real thing. I saw it, dude. I looked up and I saw you just like. <laughs> <laughs> like, it also came last. It might have been better if it was the first section. I was like, yeah. No, that one was really fun. I just, I really wish we had paper, but I wasn't sure. I asked you for paper, but I wasn't sure. I was like, oh. I, I, I also was tempted to write, but you, you are must you be able to. To use paper on the LSAT. Yes, remote test takers permit has six blank sheets of A4 paper. That's crazy. Okay, well, there you go. But, you know, I was I feel like we would have done better on the fourth one if we had if we had paper but I just wanted to be on the safe yeah. side and was like that's not used once, just in case I think it was like or the first question was okay because there were only four cities but yeah. once it got to like six, six eight or eight yeah. I was yeah, like no, oh, what the hell? so just just to let you guys know this is wholly real we didn't look this up at all we literally didn't even know that you could use paper so <laughs> there you go well, I suppose in real life you would have done a little bit more research on what that looks you like you might know what sections are in the exam <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was kind of fun. I'm really tired. I'm yeah. curious to see sort of how our, our scores and stuff get broken down and like how this actually, you know, yeah. sort of looks from a professional standpoint. Yeah, I mean, I would actually like to go through and review like what I did incorrectly. And that's exactly what we did. We sent our full results over to Jake Kleinbaum, professional LSAT tutor and founder of Premier LSAT Prep to find out what he thought about how we did on the LSAT. I don't think there's anything that I can say where we can pinpoint and be like, oh, you were bad at this, like you were good at this or something like that. Cause it's like, you were bad at all of it. Like, you know, that's, <laughs> it's, but yeah, that being said, there's still definitely like plenty of things to talk about. I don't know how much there will be to talk about reading comprehension, but it could be a good idea to go through a question or two of logical reasoning or something. Start off, tell me what your thinking was on this question. I basically broke it down into just blocks. I will do this thing only if A and not B. This thing is A and it is B, and therefore I will not do this thing. So I was looking for parallels within the answers and I saw that A fit that exactly, but also B fit that exactly as well. So I wasn't really sure which one it was. Well, Lloyd, you kind of got it pretty close to the way that you should really go about answering these questions, which is to break it up. You noted, you know, there are different elements to this argument and we need to make sure that those elements are being matched in the answer choices. We've got a conclusion here that says, I will not buy that dress. So I need to, I'm going to go through the answer choices and just make sure that every answer choice contains a similar conclusion. A and B, right, they both look good. Therefore, this snowflake will not melt. This HIPAA will not pass inspection. It sounds pretty similar. Most of the answer choices do. I would say the only answer choice that doesn't really match that is E, which says this assembly may call a meeting of the executive board, which, you know, they're saying, okay, they're allowed to do it. It's not saying with certainty whether it's actually going to happen. Just based off of that part, a little bit skeptical about E. I'd probably eliminate it and just think about the other answer choices. Then we'll want to do the same thing for the other parts of the argument, those other two elements that you mentioned. Yeah, I realize this actually now just reading it over again where it's like, you know, if you're buying things, it's not to say that you will have to buy it if it's 
fashionable and not too expensive. There are probably a lot of things that are fashionable and not too expensive that you may not buy for whatever other reason, right? Um, and I feel like the stuffed animal thing, I realize now, is, is actually similar in that way. It could not pass inspection for myriad other reasons that aren't to do with it having sharp edges or being completely sealed. Right, exactly. I think with the pressure of the time, too, I was looking at it and I was like, they look the same to me. And I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't tell the nuance. Like, <laughs> so basically, there. I looked up, I could see, like, I could realize our brows were, like, furring more and more. I was like, it must be question eight. <laughs> Definitely a question that is really hard to get if you, don't, if you don't know what conditional reasoning is. The other, I think, major piece was obviously logic games. Honestly, I don't know how you did as well as you did on logic games <laughs> uh, without, without writing anything down. When I took a diagnostic, test the very first time I think I maybe got four questions right on logic game. Totally normal to really not know what to do on this section. The first thing that you want to do is write out a setup. In this game here we've got two things that we are sequencing. We've got Frank's travel itinerary and Gloria's travel itinerary. And noting any other important pieces of information here in the setup, we should know we've got four cities, but only three slots for each person. So obviously each person isn't gonna be visiting one of the cities. We can't miss any of the cities. And I can't repeat these cities within each of my sequences. I can't have F visiting Houston twice, for example. Then we'll start writing out the rules. First rule says anyone visiting Montreal must visit Toronto in immediately afterwards. So the way that we'll diagram this out is we'll say, if you're visiting Montreal, then we've got to have an MT block. Second rule, here they're saying, if Gloria visits Houston, then Frank must visit Montreal. Last rule here, if Frank visits Houston, he must later visit Seattle. Doing it like this would make the game a lot easier for you. It's also a good idea to think about what inferences you might make from the setup. Inferences are like additional pieces of information that they didn't explicitly say. So here, one inference we can make is that if H is in G, then we know M is in F. We can combine that with our first rule. I might just the second rule, if H is in G, then I've got an MT block. Yeah, that makes sense. So looking at a question like this first one here, this should be free points as long as you approach it the right way. And the right way to approach a question like this is just to go one rule at a time and eliminate answer choices that violate each of the rules. So we start off with just with the first rule. Anyone visiting Montreal must visit Toronto immediately afterwards. So I'm going to look through the answer choices, get rid of any answers that violate that. So in answer choice A, I've got an M showing up here and a T directly after, an M showing up here and a T directly after. So both of those look fine. B, similarly, I've got an M, T directly after, that looks fine. C, I've got an M here, but no T directly after, so I've got to get rid of it. D, I've got M, T directly after, that looks good. E, I've got an M, but no T directly after it. So, gotta get rid of E for that reason. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Next rule, we do the same thing. If H is in G, then I've got an M, T block in F. I've got an H and G over here in B. I don't have an M, T block in F, so I've gotta get rid of it, right? I've got an H and G in D. I've got an M, T block there, so that's that looks fine. Now our last rule, we'll apply that one. If I've got an H and F, then H needs to come before S and F. So in answer choice A, I've got an H and F, but there's no S there. So I've got to get rid of it, and we're left with D by process of elimination. This is so much easier when you write it out. I, I, because this is what I was doing, but in my head, right? right. And so I was like keeping track. I was like counting my fingers. I was like, wait. <laughs> I saw you counting your fingers. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude, this is this is crazy. Yeah, okay, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is also more foolproof because I was going for a process of elimination, but by like for each like A, B, C, D, I was like seeing, oh, like do these work, but that was very slow and obviously not yeah. accurate. So I, I feel like I'm actually going to go back and do it. I'll send it to you, Jake, just just for shits, right. but I'll, I'm going to do an, another logic game just with paper. I'm not going to do any other prep because I thought it was actually quite fun, that part. Totally. Yeah, yeah. I think you're unique in that, <laughs> in that regard. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I didn't find that fun there's, at all. There's no medication to cure what I have, Jake. <laughs> you want to pause it here? Yeah. Nice. Do we have more caffeine? Yes, there's another coffee sitting there. Dude, my brain is actually hurting. Yeah.